Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about lateral ankle sprain rehab. And when we're working with people rehabbing from a lateral ankle sprain, or perhaps they have a history of multiple uh, lateral ankle sprains and they're just dealing with inter intermittent issues, one common feature that we see clinically is an inability to delay the transition from the medial foot to the lateral foot, or delay the transition from more of a, a dorsiflex pronated position to more of a planiflex supinated position. Okay. And in this video, we're going to go through two separate exercises, early phase loading exercises that we can do to improve this capacity. So during a single leg calf raise, for example, like we see here, we might see this very quick transition from pronation and dorsiflexion where the load is distributed more so through the medial portion of the foot, particularly through the, the first metatarsal head, into plantar flexion and supination, okay, where the, the load is shifted laterally far too quickly. We might even see this concentration of supination or external rotation of the foot without that plantar flexion moment that we want to see. We're not really seeing that plantar flexion um, torque in this, um, in this video here, which represents that we're not really getting appropriate load into the plantar flexors. But when we move from that pronation uh, or medial foot contact to uh, supination and external rotation of the foot too quickly, this may represent that we, we have lost the ability to maintain that load into the first metatarsal head. And if we, if we shift that workload from the medial foot into the lateral foot far too quickly, this can leave the lateral tissues of the ankle a bit more vulnerable to increased stress and increased forces, particularly if we're moving at high speeds. So two strategies that we can work through in the early phases of the rehab process are ankle pulses with more of a dorsiflexed and pronated bias, okay? Um, where we're actually getting low through the, the distal plantar flexors, but we're challenging the capacity to um, maintain that load through the first metatarsal head, and we're gonna progress from more of a, a bent knee position to more of a straight knee position, because with more of a bent knee position, this is going to uh, facilitate the capacity to get that load through the first metatarsal head, while the straight knee position is going to challenge that capacity through the first metatarsal head, all while we get load into the distal plantar flexors. So in this flex knee position, it's often much easier to distribute that load and keep that load into the medial portion of the foot during our loading, um, because with a flex knee, the tibia will naturally bias a little bit more internal rotation, which can facilitate that internal rotation and pronation of the foot. Okay, so we're maintaining that pelvic hover proximally. So the, the pelvis is bridged to put more load into the metatarsal heads and challenge that plantar flexion moment at the ankle. We're building pressure through the metatarsal heads, but we're dropping the heel then below that mid-range position and then building pressure again through plantar flexion to come back up to the mid-range. We're not necessarily moving through full plantar flexion because, because we want to keep that load into the medial foot but while still getting that load into the plantar flexors, particularly the distal plantar flexors here. And a potential early phase loading progression here, aside from starting to move through greater levels of plantar flexion and holding on to that first metatarsal head contact, is to move from a flex knee where the tibia is more internally rotated to more of a straight knee where the tibia will naturally express more external rotation. Okay, and we can still build pressure through the metatarsal heads, drive that force through the metatarsal heads to get a small range plantar flexion and then work through the ankle pulse that way. Okay, now this might seem like a, a simple strategy, but for someone that's struggling to maintain that load through the first metatarsal head, it can be very challenging because when we extend the knee and the tibia externally rotates, that will naturally want to try and drag the foot into external rotation and lift that force away from the first metatarsal head. So we wanna keep that dorsiflexion bias with that straight knee here early on, get that load through the first metatarsal heads, uh, the, all the metatarsal heads, particularly the first metatarsal head, drive that load, lift that angle through a short range of motion so we can keep that load through the first metatarsal head as we get load into the plantar flexors. And we want to keep the rep range high with this one because typically, again, it might be easy from a, from a muscular standpoint, but we want to give that nervous system the experience of, ex of, of handling pressure and load through the distal plantar flexors with that kinematic position of the foot biased towards more dorsiflexion and pronation. So keep in mind that these are early phase loading strategies and we'll always want to increase the speed, the challenge and the load through the ankle tissues as we progress through the rehab process. But hopefully these strategies, along with the, particularly along with the, the thought process underpinning these strategies, will give you some ideas when you're working with these cases.